This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ravel's BU-131D, Zvezda's newest Tiger, details for Edward's Tempest, a new segment, Car Corner, and Door Wings S55. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We've got a bunch on tap for this episode, starting with Ravel's 132nd scale Booker BU-131D. Known as the Young Man or Young Man, this biplane was the Luftwaffe's primary basic trainer during World War II. And some were even fitted with bombs and used for nighttime harassment missions on the Eastern Front. Like its contemporaries, the Tiger Moth and Stearman, the Young Man found its way into civilian hands after the war, and many are still flying today. The parts of this kit originate with ICM and look terrific. Much of the BU-131 was fabric over either metal or wood structures, and that's reflected in parts like the fuselage halves. The upper wing is split in half with molded grab handles on the upper part and locators for the struts underneath. The lower half of the bottom wing is full span incorporating part of the belly, and the upper sections are split left and right. Up front, behind the nose, and separate top and side cow panels sits a fairly well detailed engine with block halves, sump, plumbing, and other equipment, and mounts. The exhausts are individual pipes that attach to a strip under the nose. The cockpit comprises frames for the sides, floor, and cross members, control sticks, pedals and throttles, and seats. Decals provide dials for the clear plastic instrument panels. The clear sprue also provides low windshields. Simple landing gear legs, wheels, interplane, and cabane struts finish the airframe. A rigging diagram is provided. Decals and color diagrams give markings for two German Bukers, one on the Eastern Front in 1941, the other in Germany in 1944. No swastikas are included. There aren't a lot of parts in Ravel's BU-131, but it should be a pretty straightforward build of the graceful trainer. Next up, we have Zvesta's 135th scale Tiger M. This is the latest version of the Russian Army's armored vehicle with upgrades developed from deployment experiences. Those upgrades include a new engine under a now armored hood and a single square hatch in place of the original split round one on the roof. Also on the roof of the vehicle represented by this kit is the Arbalet DM remotely controlled weapon station. Much of the chassis, drivetrain, suspension, wheels, vinyl tires, winch bumper, tanks, front grille, and brush guard are common to Zvezda's initial Gaz Tiger release in 2016. Much of the vehicle above the chassis is new, including the sides and doors with separate inside panels. A new roof with a square hatch, as well as a new rear panel with slightly different doors, and a heavy hood finish the body. Inside, in addition to the dashboard and seats, there's the position for the weapon station operator, including a screen, supports, keyboard, and joysticks. Large ammo boxes occupy racks on the right wheel arch. The weapon station consists of a multi-part support and a bracket to hold a nicely molded 12.7 millimeter machine gun. Clear parts supply the windscreens and other windows, headlights, and internal light fixtures. Decals and color diagrams provide markings for two Russian Army Tigers, one camouflaged, the other in green from a 2016 Victory Parade. This kit is further proof of just how good Zvezda armor kits have gotten, and it's a must-have for fans of Russian vehicles. We've got a couple more kits on the docket, but first, let's take a look at some new detail sets to enhance Edward's recent 148th scale Tempest Mark V kits. From Edward, there's a brass and set for the main undercarriage. It includes a pair of beautiful bronze replacements for the legs. And a set of thin resin gear doors with crisp cast detail on the inner and outer faces. Also under the brass and label comes a set of eight RP3 60-pound rockets. It includes the eight projectiles with thin fins and the rails that mount under the Tempest wings. A photo etched metal fret provides the clamps that secure the rockets on the rails and the pigtails. Decals provide markings and stencils for the rockets. Barracuda Cast has produced a bunch of resin detailing and accurizing parts for Tempests, including a seat with the harness molded on, and exhaust for Tempest Mark V's and 6's with hollowed ends and mounting details. Also for the front end is a new spinner with improved openings for the blades and an intake set with the concentric ring intake shroud emitted in the Edward kit. It also includes an alternate dust filter. Lastly, Barracuda Cast has three sets of wheels, including a set of five slot Series 1 wheels with smooth tires, a set of four slot late style Series 2 and on wheels with smooth tires, and a similar set of wheels with block tread. All of the tires include sidewall logos, data, and beading. There's plenty of options here to enhance Edward's Tempests. From the creators of New Product Rundown, it's Scale Auto Car Corner. 
Welcome to a new video by FSM's fellow magazine, Scale Auto. It's Car Corner. To help me with that, I am proud to introduce a face that should be familiar to many of you longtime fans of the new product rundown. It's Tim Kidwell, the editor of Scale Auto. Hey guys, it's almost as if I had never left. Anyway, let's kick off this new video with a look at Ravel's 124th scale, Porsche 934 RSR. This racing version of Porsche's famed 911 was introduced in 1976 and won several races over the next few years. Ravel first kitted the car a couple of years ago, but this release puts the car in the distinctive martini livery. Beautifully printed decals provide the red, blue, and black stripes, numbers, sponsors, details, and harnesses for the seats. The body is a single part with crisp details, good shapes, and minimal mold seams, to which are attached air dams. The trunk lid at the front is separate, revealing minimal detail. Also separate is the hood with its integral spoiler and fine open louvers. Under it lurks a detailed replica of the car's 3-liter flat-six engine, including a two-part block, transmission, front belts and pulleys, air intakes and manifolds, exhaust, axles, and more. The suspension parts attach to a one-piece chassis pan and connect through brakes to chrome-plated wheels and rubber slicks. Molded in black, the interior includes a floor pan, side panels, bucket seats and controls, dashboard and roll cage. Clear parts provide separate windows, headlights, and taillights. All in all, it's a nice looking kit of a sharp race car. And you can find more new car kits in the April issue of Scale Auto on sale now. Thanks, Tim. Finally, here's Doorwing's most ambitious kit to date, a 172nd scale SMS55. This Italian double hull flying boat dates to the mid 1920s and about 250 were built. The prototype set several speed, altitude, and distance with payload records. In addition to airline surfaces, S-55 served in Brazilian, Italian, Spanish, and Romanian air forces. Much of the S-55's airframe is the big wing. The center section has upper and lower halves with structural detail inside the ladder for the flight deck. Other cockpit detail includes side wing frames, seats, and floor sections for them, control wheels, yoke, and throttle quadrant that will get photo etch levers and instrument panel. Sturdy wing spars attach the outer wing sections, which have subtle rib detail at the leading edges. Long struts connect the tailplanes to the rest of the airframe. The rudders, ailerons, and elevator are separate. The float slash passenger compartments feature crisp detail outside and in, and have openings in the upper deck fore and aft. Internal braces lock the bottom to the sides. A pair of resin engines replicate the tandem power plants, mounted on a frame on the top of the wing behind the cockpit. They receive plastic props, exhausts, and air intakes, as well as a radiator with a photo etch screen. The brass fret also supplies thin inserts for the struts, seat bottoms, windshield frames, control horns, some struts, and other small details. Clear plastic provides cabin windows along the hull sides and on top of the wing and windscreens. Optional acetate film windscreens are included. And there's a set of self-adhesive masks as well. Decals and color diagrams give markings for three colorful transatlantic S55s. Plenty of detail and a unique subject make this kit worth a look. Look for reviews of it along with the BE-131 and upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for stopping by FineScale.com. While you're here, why don't you head on over to Comeback Hobby Store for tools and paints. And if you want a break from plastic that may just help you with your photo etch skills, check out the metal earth kits we now offer. Until next time, I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm on top of the world. Looking down on creation. <laughs>